In this fourth part of this series on Prototype Titler, I want to deal with the subject of collections. These are groups of presets, either built in or custom, that you can call up in a list. You choose the appropriate preset for your requirement and apply it to your text block. I also want to explain how to apply effects to parts of a text block. This is quite a powerful feature, which isn't available in Vegas Pro's native Titles and Text plugin. Let's first explore the subject of collections. In part 3, I mentioned briefly the floppy disk icon and the icon that looks like four small squares which appear at the right side of the effects in the effects tab. The four squares icon is the collections icon. Clicking that icon for a particular effect will display a list of inbuilt presets relevant to that effect group. It will also display any custom presets under the custom heading. As an example, I'll select the collections icon for the gradient fill effect. As you can see, there are five entries. The top four are inbuilt presets, and the fifth is the custom section. Any gradient effect that you customize will be shown here. More on that later. To apply a preset, make sure that the correct text block is selected. Double click that preset then enable the effect checkbox. Now I'll look at the collection for one of the other effects. What you see is entries with the label of each of the effects Blur, Drop Shadow and Glow plus a custom entry. They actually don't contain any inbuilt presets. If you double click one of these, say the glow entry, another glow effect entry will be added to the effects list. This is handy if you want a glow with a mixture of colours. I'll demonstrate. If I want to use the dual glow combination again, I can save them as custom effects. To do this, I click the floppy disk icon for one of the glows and enter a suitable name. I'll call it Red Glow. I'll do the same for the Yellow Glow. You can see now that the selected custom effect will cause the name of the effect, in this case Glow, to appear in the panel at the bottom. The word will have the effect applied so you can see the effect. Now I'll remove the text block and create a new one.
Now if I want that same combination of glow effects, I can select the collections icon. Now I can select the red glow preset by double clicking it. Important, make sure that the entry isn't selected, otherwise double clicking it simply allows you to rename it. To apply the yellow glow as well, I select the original glow collections icon again and double click the yellow glow entry. Both glows are applied to the text and two new glow entries are added to the effects list, one for each custom preset. In part 3 of this series, I described how to manipulate text blocks and apply effects to them. In this part, I want to describe how sections of a text block can be modified. This is quite a powerful feature of Prototype Titler. In part 1, I mentioned four icons at the top of the workspace panel. It wasn't appropriate at that time to go into detail about these but now it is. The four icons from left to right are labelled Navigate to Parent, Navigate to Child, Navigate to Previous Peer and Navigate to Next Peer. In this example the parent is the complete text block. Underneath the parent there are three children, the individual lines in the text block. Underneath each child, who is now a parent, there are further children, the individual words in the text block. Underneath each child, who is now a parent, there are further children, the individual characters. With the text block divided into children, the peer icons become enabled. These allow you to switch between individual children. This calls for a demonstration. With the whole text block selected, it's a parent. If I click the Navigate to Child icon, the parent becomes three children, three lines with the first line selected. If I now click the Navigate to Next Peer, the second line is selected. I'll switch back to the first child by clicking the Navigate to Previous Peer icon. Now with the first child selected, if I click the Navigate to Child icon, the first word is selected. This is a child of the first line, which was a child of the text block. I can now navigate through the words within the text block using the Peer icons. If I repeat the process with the first child selected, the first child, that's the first character of the first word, is selected. The peer icons can then be used to navigate the characters in the text block. Another way of selecting parents and children is to shift click inside the parent. This will select a child within that parent. Which child is selected depends upon where you shift click. When you've selected a child within a parent, you can select individual children within that parent with a single click. Each child becomes a text block and as such can be manipulated individually. All the transforms and effects described previously can be applied.
What you can't do this way is manipulate groups of characters within a word. It's worth noting though that text attributes such as font family and font color can be modified for groups of characters. To do this, the text block needs to be in edit mode. You'll notice that the effects I applied previously have gone. Don't worry about this, it's only temporary. Now I can drag over the characters that I want to modify, then change their attributes using the span properties. Before finishing, I want to mention the titles collection. If you look at the top right of the automation panel, you'll see the now familiar collections icon. Clicking this opens up a list of title presets. Double clicking on any of these will create a title with a predefined animation. In future tutorials, I'll explain how to modify a title preset so that it can be saved as a custom one. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Bye for now.